Welcome back to Amerisogyny. I am your host, Hannah Blue. This is episode seven, the dangers of cyberbullying and harmful trends on social media. Death is traumatizing for anyone, but is death ever good? I think so. If the death of something chaotic causes more good than harm, I say it's essential. What should die? Social media sites. Mm Mm-hmm. TikTok should be banned. Twitter should die. Instagram should die. Snapchat should die. And Facebook should die. They don't help people to be cordially social. They are the catalyst that drives censorship and bullying. That's right. Censorship in this country. In the United States of America, people are telling others what they can say how to say it, what not to say, how to feel, and how not to feel. They're telling people, if you don't like someone, let it go, like Frozen. Keyboard warriors are literally telling people not to shade others, which is subjective, using the very method of bullying. Is this logical to you? Before social media sites, if you didn't like what someone said, You just didn't go around them. Simple. You didn't call them. You didn't write to them. You kept your distance. Now we have these social sites where people are allowed to log on and tell others what to say. People who have zero control over their own lives are in a race to control others. Something that recently happened, Pink has come under fire from making comments about Christina Aguilera. She has a new album dropping, Trustfall, and she's promoting it. She was asked about making the video Lady Marmalade back in 2001, people. She said, it wasn't very fun to make because there was a lot of fuss. There were some nice personalities. Kim and Maya were nice. She clarified her comments further on who's talking to Chris Wallace. And she said, back then, Our personalities, meaning her and Christina, did not mix at all. And that was okay. We hugged it out and kissed it out. And we have many times since. And here came the keyboard warriors to check Pink on her truth. Pink doesn't feel she shaded Christina. She said, the shade where people get it twisted with me is that if you ask me a question, I'm going to answer it honestly. I'm going to tell you my experience of how it happened. That's not shade. That's just honesty. I should know better by now that total honesty doesn't work in this world. People want to hear nice things and want you to clean it up all for them. And that's just not my way. And she's right. We live in a world where people want custom made booties for their eardrums. They want to dictate and control what you say. And... If your opinion or truth doesn't make them feel warm and fuzzy, they have a problem. And I have a problem with that. Because in this country, the United States, speech is supposed to be free for everyone. Who is anyone to tell people what to say and who to like and how they should remember events that happened to them? Nobody. Wallace asked, Did Christina really want to throw down with you? Pink said she did. Christina was upset she was sitting in her chair. She also said, I was homeless at 15. You can't talk to me any kind of way. You picked the wrong one. But that's over. It's an interesting story and it probably happens every day in every workplace. Some people just don't get along. And then they figure it out and they realize what's important and they hug it out. And move on. I feel pink when she says nobody can talk to her any kind of way. Trust me, I do. I think that's growth, maturity, and honesty coming from pink. And what did Christina have to say? TMZ released a story and the headline was just horrendous. Christina Aguilera, no issues with pink despite getting shaded. That's TMZ, messy and unnecessary. Well, a source close to Christina tells TMZ 
she's got no issues with pink and has enjoyed their professional time together. Hmm, why should she have beef with pink? These are grown women with children and careers. They moved on. So if Christina doesn't have a problem with pink, what's the issue? I'm against bullying. I'm also against censorship. But bullying is detrimental to mental health. It has caused people to kill themselves, children and adults. And it goes down mostly through cyberbullying. The keyboard warriors came after Pink so hard, she had to shut them down. She said, y'all are nuts. Christina had shit to do with who was on that song, if you don't know by now. I'm not shading someone by telling it over and over and over what actually happened. I'm 0% interested in your fucking drama. If you haven't noticed, I'm a little busy selling. And by selling, I mean tickets and albums and bake sales, etc. The comments. She's bitter, misogynistic, a mean girl. Pink's a mean girl for what? Saying what a lot of us were thinking back then? Listen, if her music didn't connect with people, it wouldn't have sold millions of copies. We were tired of seeing naked-ass women on the internet. We were sick of it. And as far as Kim Kardashian goes, was she not outed for supporting Balenciaga? A brand that sexualizes young kids? Some people still support her. But they want to come for Pink for saying she didn't get along with Christina back in the day? But it's fine to stand someone who supports pedophilia? Find the logic in that. Another thing we need to ask ourselves, would these conversations take place if social media sites didn't exist? No, because people would have time to focus on their own lives. And probably lives would be saved because victims wouldn't be on the receiving end of cyberbullying. You don't like what someone says, so you throw a bully party? Wow. Same thing happened on TikTok with Selena Gomez. People were bullying her over thinking she shaded Hailey Bieber. She says she didn't, and people blew it out of proportion. The woman has lupus. Where's the compassion? How harmful is cyberbullying? I have plenty of sources. Let's go. Bullying. 20% or one out of every five middle and high school students report being bullied each year. Kids who are bullied are at an increased risk for depression, anxiety, sleep issues, lower academic achievement, and dropping out of school. Cyberbullying. People who have experienced cyberbullying at some point in their lives have more than doubled from 18% to 37%. And over 60% of students who experienced cyberbullying reported that it immensely impacted their ability to learn and feel safe while at school. 59% of teens in the U.S. have been bullied or harassed online, and over 90% believe it's a major problem. Targets of cyberbullying are at a greater risk than others of both self-harm and suicidal behaviors. Nearly 18% of youth report self-harming at least once, and about 6% of students have self-harmed or posted online or shared hurtful content about themselves anonymously. RSIB eyeshadow palette, self-injurious behavior, was created in support of people who self-harm. You can find it on our website, 21bluelash.net. Let's continue. Suicide. Students who experience bullying or cyberbullying are nearly two times more likely to attempt suicide. Suicide ideation and attempts among teens have nearly doubled since 2008. That makes suicide the second leading cause of death for people ages 10 through 34. Nearly 1 in 20 teens experience suicide in a single year. Bullying and cyberbullying are also associated with developing low self-esteem, depression, anxiety, family issues, academic issues, delinquency, school violence, and suicidal thoughts or attempts. Nearly one in five children and teens in the U.S. experience a serious mental health concern associated with trauma, social isolation, 
and bullying. However, only 20% of them receive help. Bullied teens also have a higher risk of developing suicidal ideation. Let's talk discrimination. More than 8 in 10 students who identify as LGBTQ experienced harassment or assault at school. Between the years of 2015 and 2016, there were over 135,000 claims of harassment or bullying on the basis of sex, race, sexual orientation, disability, and religion. Students with learning disabilities, autism, emotional and behavioral disorders, other health impairments, and speech or language impairments report greater rates of bullying than neurotypical peers. This is why I love stats and research. You cannot argue with facts. These social media sites do not help. They harm people. They have no real purpose. And the major focus of the owners is money. Elon Musk. Twitter has been sinking like the Titanic ever since he took over. It's being run by a man who does not care who he allows on Twitter. As long as they can keep his ship afloat and beat his competitors, he doesn't care what goes on. Since he took over, people have been called niggers on Twitter. Homophobic slurs have been hurled at gay people. Transphobic slurs. You name it. Same with Instagram. Transgender women are called sir. Transgender men are called ma'am. There is no respect. And we can't hide behind opinions. Because if what you say causes significant harm to one's mental health, that's bullying, not opinions. Research concludes positive peer interaction combats cyberbullying. That means getting out and making real connection. Now, I gave you a bit of research that highlights how harmful cyberbullying is. Here are true stories of people who are no longer here because of it. Channing Smith, a 16-year-old from Manchester, Tennessee, committed suicide on September 23rd. And this was after two classmates posted screenshots of explicit text conversations he had with another man. According to his brother, Joshua, Channing shot and killed himself after friends posted chats on Snapchat and Instagram that outed him as bisexual. In episode five, we talked about frenemies and the importance of cutting them off or feeding them with long-handled spoons, yes? This is why you don't keep people around you who secretly dislike you. 15-year-old Nate Bronstein was a student at a private school in Chicago. His parents say he was relentlessly cyberbullied. He tried to report to the dean of students that several students were bullying him through text messages and on Snapchat. One of the Snapchats encouraged Nate to kill himself. Another user gave him an indirect death threat. Approximately one month later, Nate's daddy found him hanging from the shower. A noose was tied around his neck. He was 15 years old. 15. Gone. For nothing. Here's another research study. Cyberbullying linked with suicidal thoughts and attempts in young teens. Cyberbullying, bullying that happens online, has been on the rise in this age range. Increased use of the internet during the COVID-19 pandemic has further boosted this trend. Of course it has. This is how trash TikTok is. There are 40 plus year old women on TikTok who sick their followers on people to bully them. And what does TikTok do? Verify them. Oh yeah. One in particular I can think of, they rewarded her for her BS. There was also an idiotic trend going on a while back where kids pranked their parents by saying their favorite celebrities were dead. And when the parents showed concern, shock or sadness, the kids laughed in their faces while recording. What's funny about death? It was sickening to watch. But TikTok claims it's not harmful to children. Meanwhile, kids have died during their stupid trends. In Richmond Heights, a 12-year-old boy died after trying the blackout challenge. His name was Tristan K. 
Hassan, and this stupid trend prompted users to hold their breath or choke themselves until they passed out. His brothers found him unresponsive in his bedroom and FaceTimed their mother, and they told her their brother was dead. Another story. Two girls, eight and nine, also died after doing the blackout challenge on TikTok, and the parents sued TikTok. They said TikTok knew or should have known addictive and dangerous content was directed towards children and it failed to take significant action to stop those videos or to warn children and their parents about them. Of course they knew. They just didn't care. Let me tell you, when I and others reported these harmful videos, you know what TikTok did for us? They ignored us. Then they gave people community violations for harmless videos. I kid you not, a girl received a violation for talking about her sinuses. In Italy, Antonella Sicomera was only 10 years old. She hung herself playing the blackout challenge. Another child, dead. What about the parents? Their children, dead. Gone, buried, by. That's what we've become. On to the next video, to the next trend. I don't watch TikTok videos. I've told people to stop sending them to me. I don't support them. And I don't support cyberbullying. I do support free speech and being able to say what you want to say. That's what I support. What can you do to stop cyberbullying? If you're a parent, be vigilant about supervising your child on social media. Have open communication with your kids. Know who their friends are. Know who they're talking to. If you find evidence of bullying, confront it. Who is this person? How long has it been going on? Get counseling if needed. I'm fortunate enough to have had a childhood where social media didn't exist. And we did just fine. I don't see the value in social media sites. I think they do more harm than good. There's plenty of research to back my claim. You know... People want to rally against Balenciaga for sexualizing kids, and that's okay. But let's make sure we're being equally as vigilant as to what they're exposed to on social media. And I'm out of time. Thank you for listening to today's episode. I hope you received a message out of it. And if you did, remember to share with a friend. Be easy. Be easy.